Hey, how's it going guys? John here from the Reaper blog. I was watching Kenny's video last night on making filtered delays with redelay, and he did it in a really strange way. Uh, it was kind of bugging me enough that I had to record a video on it. So I have done a video on using delay and feedback effects, and you can check that out with the link in the description or the info card link there. But this is going to be a little bit different. We're going to be doing this feedback loop with one track. So I've got this synth here, and it's going to go through a special feedback loop that we put inside of an effects chain. It's going to be on a separate track, so we have more control over that. So let's first hear this with just the synth. Nothing too special, no spatial effects, no stereo width, pretty much just this staccato uh, performance. And now we'll run it through redelay and this effects chain that I've set up. And it is sending uh, post fader at Unity. So a much nicer sound, nice movement to it. There's some stereo width, and it's just an overall better sound. It's got re-delay, re-EQ, uh, the EQ is modulated a little bit, and then a gate to just to make sure that it doesn't run on forever. So I'm going to start off with uh, removing all the effects, and let's build this from scratch. So once again, here's our starting point. All right, so that's going from this track into track one, the delay track, and we're going to start adding in effects. So first we will put in the delay. So we'll go to the Cocos folder and add in re-delay. And while we're here, we'll add in re-EQ and re-gate. All right, so may as well just start off with the gate since that's open here. I'm going to set this to minus 45. So no low level signals below minus 45 are going to um, pass through here. I'm going to use the release time and set that to fairly long, so like half a second. Now I'll just take the hysteresis or hysteresis control and bring that down to about minus six, just so that the lower level stuff doesn't make the gate more choppy sounding. May as well just set this RMS size to a little bit longer, five milliseconds. Because we're making a feedback loop, it can potentially run on forever and I'll just keep uh, looping the signal like a very low level signal. This also has the potential of being very loud, so that is something we also have to be careful of. Uh, but for now, that should be fine. We're not going to pass through the dry signal, so we'll turn that all the way down. And on this delay tap, with the volume, we'll set this at minus three. And we're going to set this one to pan to the left by about half. And I'm going to set this to one eighth note. Now I'm going to add another tap. We have our left delay, and on the right delay, we just need to pan this about halfway to the right. Set this to two eighth notes. And that's it. So that's our delay setup. EQ, we want to filter this because that helps keep it from uh, becoming infinite. Uh, let's just hear the sound of this delay, uh, which is just a single repeat. So it's not really filtered yet. That filtering effect really comes in through steeper filters, but also going through the effects loop and the same signal that was already filtered gets filtered again with the same filter and it becomes more and more steep. This third band, we want this to be a moving band. So we want the uh, frequency to move along with the tempo of the track. So uh, just move the parameter, go to the param menu, go to parameter modulation link. In here, we're going to set this to the center, enable the LFO. I want this to be a triangle shape, tempo synced. And I want this to be slow, so four quarter notes, one bar. And the strength I want to be around 50%. Let's see how this is actually moving. 
Oh, and it's not in the correct direction. We need to set this to centered. And the strength down a little bit. I want it to go from like 200 to 5K. And let's hear this now. Yeah, okay, so now is making the actual feedback loop. And we're going to use some JS plugins here, and these are included with Reaper. It's gmem receive and send. So receive goes at the top of the effects chain. We're going to set this to receive from slot one. And gmem send goes at the end of the effects chain. And this is going to send on slot one. And now we play this. Oh, got really loud. We need to adjust uh, something in here so that uh, like this EQ doesn't constantly uh, get louder. Let's just trim this by minus three and see how that goes. So minus six is where it's at for that. So our effects chain is a buffer receive plugin. So that's receiving from the end of the effects chain. Then it's going into the delay. It's delaying the, the incoming signal by one eighth note and then panning that to the left about halfway. Then in another delay tap, it's taking the input signal, delaying that by two eighth notes and panning that to the right about halfway. The EQ is filtering the lows and the highs. Then there's a modulated boost sweeping from about 200 to 5K. Then there's the gate that just keeps this from cluttering up the track and running on forever. Without the gate, it actually will pretty much run forever. And GMEM Send takes everything that's coming into this plugin and sends it back to the beginning. So yeah, so this is a different way to set up a, uh, a filter delay. It only uses one track. And having this on its own track means that we can um, adjust its fader level and all that kind of stuff. So let's just play with that. We'll start with it all the way down. And it shuts off automatically, so it doesn't run forever. And if you want it to run for longer, it's just a matter of changing the gate threshold. We could set this to minus 60. Um, that's pretty typical for like a reverb effect. And it runs for a little bit longer and smoothly dies out. So there you go, a filtered delay using stock plugins in Reaper, all on one track. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you've learned something. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon. And visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.